Welcome to Our Community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. Happy St. Patty's Day. Thank and uh, Rex Mori joins us from Men's Challenge. Good morning. Good morning. And wearing the green. You're doing great today. <laughs> Thank you. So Men's Challenge, Rex, first of all, let us know more about it. What is it? Well, we are a Christ-based organization that seeks to help men uh, get reconnected in their families, in their faith, and in their future uh, with a focus on job uh, employment. Where are you finding these men, How do, and how do they find you? Well, uh, a number of the men that uh, come to us come through uh, either court referral uh, out of incarceration. They've heard of us while uh, being incarcerated. Uh, some come from... Um, References from friends, family, uh, churches, uh, homeless shelters as well. So a variety of uh, sources. Some just walk in. These other organizations, are you partnering with them in any way um, to get on everyone's radar? Uh, or how, how is that all working? Uh, we seek to. We have uh, some collaboration, for example, with uh, CTCC, mm-hmm. which is a halfway house, uh, with Wilson Hoff through ComQuest, with... Um, the Stark County uh, Jail. County jail. Uh, we have a good relationship with the chaplain there. And then also with Jobs and Family Services, many times they'll make referrals also. How long has Men's Challenge been uh, around? Well, uh, we began in January of 2012 in Alliance. Mm-hmm. And then in January of 2014, we opened up another office here in Canton. How do you begin to address job training for someone who's been incarcerated. We Earlier this week, we're talking about, you know, the challenges of finding a new job. Then you add that layer of, and I've been incarcerated on top of that. How does someone jump right. back into the job market after that? I, I think the first thing is to um, debunk the myth that no one will hire someone who's been incarcerated. Good. Uh, for many of the men, they come out with that mentality. And so, with no hope, there's no pursuit. Uh, and so that's where we begin, is letting individuals know that there are employers out there who are willing to give a man a second chance if he'll simply show that this is something in his past. Do you have some success stories, folks who come back and talk to the men currently going through it, saying, I was there, I was where you are, and now here I am here? Oh, absolutely. One of the men that I mentored in Alliance, he had uh, had recently come out of being incarcerated, uh, had been out of uh, work for a number of years, was doing everything right. Uh, he was filling out the applications. He was getting a few interviews, but there just seemed to be that that stigma of having come out of incarceration. And so what uh, what this individual did is he took advantage of our 30-day work program which is out in Hartville at MC Workshops. And while there, they saw that he was a great worker. And as many jobs come out it, through a matter of networking, uh, an individual spoke with someone out at MC Workshops, says, we need someone. They referred this individual there uh, as a part-time job to begin with, turned into a full-time job, awesome. and then moved from a full-time job to a full-time job with commission to do some extra things. And uh, then I received a call from this individual asking if we had any other Men's Challenge individuals because they were looking to bring on another man. Wow. And so he reached out to this individual. He's come back to our class as well to to share just what you said uh, in in class saying, look, I was sitting right there in that seat where you're at. And the encouragement that he received was, was simply this, there's a job out there for you. You, you just need to be patient. God knows what he's doing. Yep. There is a job out there for you. And regardless of how many no's you receive, it's only going to take one yes. That's it. You don't have to get all the jobs. No. Just one. And, and what he had shared to me afterwards, after everything fell into place, he said, you know what? Those words uh, were what kept me going. Mm-hmm. I'm more interested about this 30-day program. What takes place there? This sounds almost like a lot of mentoring and training. Yeah. Well, um, it's interesting because Men's Challenge has a lot of different facets from our uh, weekly job readiness training classes that take place once a week. And then once a month, we have a uh, hands-on vocational workshop 
Uh, we had that just this last Friday where men could take a forklift workshop and come away certified, which is something that will enhance their resume, increases their experience, and shows that they're teachable, whether they go into a warehousing job or whatever. Beyond that, at the same location in Hartville, uh, we have a 30-day work opportunity. Basically, it's four weeks. It's by application. And so after a man has gone through the eight job readiness training classes, if he's not received employment yet somewhere uh, and his application is accepted, then he can go out to its uh, pallet making uh, place mm-hmm. out in Hartville and, and Firewood as well. And he can there work for four weeks under supervision. So he's learning a, a skill. He's being paid $9 an hour. Uh, so entry level, a little better than entry level wages. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, transportation is offered uh, to and from as well. And during those four weeks, he has the opportunity to get back in the groove of, of working, of getting up at a particular hour, of working side by side with other people, of taking specific breaks. And then at the end of those four weeks, uh, if he's done a, a good job, he's earned a, uh, a job-related reference, which so many of the men that we have um, coming through Men's Challenge have difficulty with job-related references. They may have family members or pastor at the church, right? but many businesses are saying, we need professional references. right? And when they don't have that, that can be a, a strike against them as well. So this kind of experience then gives them that as well. Yes. Is there something that they need to go through for approval to take that kind of training? Because what you're talking about is giving them tools yes. that in certain instances could be used as weapons, and you're talking about someone who's just coming out of jail, and maybe the temptation would be too great. So you're laughing, but, you know, yeah. I'm no, paranoid. I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> um, and that, that's the benefit of uh, the criteria we have is, first, they have to have gone through all eight of our job readiness training classes. Mm-hmm. So we've, over that time, built a relationship with these individuals. They've gotten to know us, and we've gotten to know them as well. They also have to take that one-day uh, hands-on workshop out in Hartville as well. So that gives the opportunity for those out at the uh, MC workshops an opportunity to, to get to know them also. They also are required to have a mentor. And so that's another uh, facet of Men's Challenge, not just job readiness, uh, voc- job readiness training classes and hands-on vocational workshops, but also a mentoring relationship. And we, don't, we don't obligate any man to that who's coming into Men's Challenge. However, if they're looking to go out to the workshop, it is one of the requirements because we want a, a Christian man pouring into their lives mm-hmm. to give them that, that extra edge. And so we, uh, at four classes, we extend that offer to a man. If he would like to have a Christian man walk beside him as an encourager, and we, we emphasize that. It's not to fix them. Yeah. You know, every, every choice they make will always be their choice, but a mentor gives uh, a man an opportunity to have an extra set of eyes, an extra set of ears, uh, to be there as a, a sounding board, to be able to consider what options are available to them. And that can be whether it's prior to them getting employed. But what we found is for many men, the real challenge begins once they get a job. Oh, yes. Because once once they've been out of the workforce for some time, uh, they've become t- accustomed to a different style of living. Yes. And even what you're describing as far as the 30 days and the mentorship program and so forth, those are great places to make mistakes. Yes. And then that's where you have a nice safety net, someone who cares about you, helping you get back on your feet. The world can be a lot harsher than that. How do they adjust? Yes. No no doubt about that, that the MC workshops can be a place of grace yes. when it comes to getting back on your feet as and opposed to the so. work world. And so there a man's going to learn, you know, what it means to show up on time or to show up in general, right. but to show up on time, to take uh, limited breaks, to be back at his station when it's time to start work again, to be able to take um, advice uh, through their supervisor. Because when a man's been out of the workforce for some time, he's become accustomed to getting up when he wants, doing what he wants, with who he wants. And all of a sudden he's back in the workforce now he has to get up at a specific time. He has a schedule he has to keep. He now needs to go in and to, to work beside a, an individual eight hours, 12 hours a day that maybe he doesn't like mm-hmm. and has a supervisor who's now saying, you didn't do this right, you didn't do that right, you need to do this better. And his 
instincts may be, you know, fight or flight, right. but I don't have to stay here and take this. Mm-hmm. But in the work world, yes, yes, yes you, you do. do. You have to learn <laughs> how to receive constructive criticism exactly. and, and grow. And so that that thirty day workshop is a an, a wonderful opportunity to reacclimate you, to what it is to work. You discuss these kinds of things with the gentlemen as they're going through it. That this is going to be challenging. Oh yes. Well, there and hence the name and challenge because there are many challenges as far as reentry. It almost reminds me of you know that right on the playground when we were little that used to go around in a circle. Mm -hmm. And if you sat on it, it wasn't any big deal. You were going around fast, but you were just sitting there. If you fell off, it was very tough to run around and jump back on. (laughs) And these these gentlemen remind me of the person who might have just decided to jump off for a second, and then, boy, it's harder to jump back on than that person who's just sitting there riding around in a circle. It it can be a very daunting task at times, and that's Mm -hmm. why... Um, the mentoring is so important because there's someone alongside them, encouraging them, uh, reminding them of what it is that they're, you know, trying to attempt. Not only for themselves, but many times for their family members as well, and their, their community. What kinds of jobs are we talking about that they're able to train for? Well, it, it's interesting because uh, for the for our workshop right now, uh, we're just offering the uh, hands-on vocational workshop for forklift operation. We have in the past also offered warehousing logistics mm-hmm. and small engines and tools. Uh, and as our numbers come back up, we'll, we'll reinstate those. So that's um, that's the hands-on vocational. But uh, the jobs that we see individuals get, uh, for the most part, and, and this is what can be um, frustrating to the psyche of a man, is that let's say he, he came out of uh, or is coming out of a dependency issue, alcohol mm-hmm. or drugs, and he's, he's lost his, his employment in the past or uh, could be through incarceration. He remembers what he used to have. Right the job that he used to have, the pay that he was making before. And so in his mind, he's in his, in his heart, he's hoping, man, I'm just going to jump right back in there. Right. And what we realize is reality says, no, you're, you're going to have to come back in uh, at a lesser position, a lesser responsibility, lesser pay scale, could even be entry level. Mm-hmm. And a man really has to be ready to humble himself if that's the case. And say, you know what, I, I will see this as just what it is, entry level. It's not where I'm going to stay, but I need to get my foot in the door. I need to prove myself once again, and from there, I'll climb that ladder again. There is a very special way that a man is wired, isn't it? And is that why you felt um, really drawn to be able to develop this program for men, that it's not a men's and women's reentry program. It is specifically men's challenge. Why did you focus and zero in on men? Well, in part, just what Scripture has to say as mm-hmm. far as a man's place in the family, that uh, he is to be the head and the provider and mm-hmm. the protector and to be a producer as well. And uh, in order to accomplish that, he needs to be working, of course. And we'd realize that uh, there are women out there who need work as well, and there are single-parent families that are led by mothers, and God bless them. Yes. Uh, But at the same time, we see that uh, there are fewer and further between programs for men, to be quite honest. Interesting. And so we wanted to really concentrate and and focus there so that— so that they could get back in and and become all that God intended them to be. We're visiting with Rex Morey. He's from Men's Challenge. You can find out more at www.menschallenge.org. Phone number? Is there a phone number to call? Yes, there's actually two numbers. Uh, One is 330-754-6203. That's our Canton office. And then our Alliance office is 330-821-821. 6367. We'll be back after a few minutes. You're listening to Our Community.